you catch? It's a lizard. It's a lizard. Well, good morning, friends. It's early in the morning, about 6.30 right now, so we need to get moving. We're headed to, in this episode, Choke Creek Falls. We're going pretty early because it's a Saturday and we want to try to beat any sort of crowds. And we've got an hour to get to. Play. Yeah, it's an hour drive from here at Francis Slocum, which is where we're where we've been camping since Wednesday. And uh, we're going to meet our special guest for this episode. We'll introduce him when he does show up. And uh, this is the first time we're meeting a fellow YouTuber out in the wild. It's pretty exciting. Hopefully our kids are good and they don't scare them away. Well, they should have full bellies, so that always makes everyone just a little happier, right? Yeah, somehow we've gotten all the kids and dogs and everything taken care of by 6.30, which is our... That was our goal. That wasn't our with kids goal. That was our actual goal, and we managed to do it. So, all right, let's get in the truck, and let's get out of here. How is this gravel road smoother ride than the paved road we just got off of? The whole ride up until this point we've been thrown all over the truck and bouncing up and down and holding on to the handlebars because the roads up here are terrible. Yeah, I don't know what it is about the roads in this area. Even the one that was freshly paved we were on was still throwing us all around. <laughs> but it's funny when, the, when we put this route in the GPS to come here it said the route may feature unpaved roads and I'm just thinking to myself well don't tell me that tell the other guy he's bringing a Dodge Challenger back here so if that gives you any hint as to who's coming with us uh, you can put it in the comments or whatever but uh, we will be there soon it says we've got four miles actually back this dirt road it's pretty so far the rhododendrons are just starting to pop just like the hike we did yesterday so they're not really in full capacity yet but pretty just the same all right my friends we are experiencing the first problem of the day. The road's closed. Uh, this is Phelps Road. I'm not sure why the road's closed. So that's a problem. Uh, and everything, as far as what I've read, the parking area is back there. I'm waiting on the other guy uh, to, see what, to, to see what he wants to do. The other thing is this is a very, very popular location, apparently because you got one, two, three, four cars here already. And this is, what time is it, 7.30? But the road closure definitely does not help the cause. So, although maybe that would deter some people from walking a bit farther. What'd you, what'd you catch? It's a lizard. It's a lizard? He likes me. <laughs> What's wrong with his arm? I think that's a red spotted newt and it's missing Part of its arm. I don't think she did it to it. No. It looks like it's healed over. But uh, yeah, that's a red spotted newt. So <laughs> first, uh, first cool thing of the day, and we haven't even begun the hike yet. Friends, this is Walter Zona. You've heard me mention him on the channel several times. We're here in Spruce Swamp Natural Area of the Pinchas State Forest, and we're looking for Choke Creek Falls, and the road closed is going to make it harder to find Choke Creek Falls. So, so that's our plan for the day. Go check out his channel. Great content over there. Mostly scenic Pennsylvania stuff in, in this region because he's from Philly. Ish. A Philly area, yeah, focusing on eastern Pennsylvania, mostly. Just because, obviously, it's convenient for him to drive to places in eastern Pennsylvania so right. and since we're based in Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania is our favorite state his channel has been a great resource for us in finding awesome stuff so we're gonna we're gonna do some road walking here and see what we find. Newts, sir. 
I call them Ram Moose. So friends, yesterday it was it was toads on the trail that she was picking up and finding toads everywhere. And today it's red spotted newts. So it's little things like I said that keep these kids motivated to explore. So probably not ideal for the newts that she'd be picking them up. But I guess it can't hurt them too bad. It's definitely good to get the kids immersed in that kind of stuff because otherwise it's just a boring hike for them especially if we're walking on a road like this so but the road's pretty pretty nice and um you know because of the rain and stuff we had yesterday everything has kind of a nice shine to it because um, there's water on all the leaves and stuff and and also every time like a breeze blows you can hear the water droplets coming off of off of the trees so it's a nice peaceful morning and luckily today we're getting an early start, so it's not like yesterday where we started kind of in the heat of the heat of the day. And we'll probably be walking just as far as yesterday, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a long walk, I think. So friends, we've walked down, what's this road, Phelps Road? We've walked down Phelps Road and uh, you'll see there's a culvert and some orange blazes on a tree and the trail veers off to the right here and that's where we're going to head. This is, I believe, the Pinchot Trail. That will hopefully lead us to Choke Creek Falls and that's if we can find the waterfall. From what I read, they rerouted some of this trail to lead it right past Choke Creek Falls. So you know there might be two trails or something at some point and just hopefully we take the right one but between all of us here navigating we should be able to find it so it seems like the uh the rhododendron are more in bloom here than they were up at bear creek it's interesting we're i think we're down in elevation maybe a little bit from there so i don't know if that if that has something to do with it but these are definitely more fully out of course it's been hot the last couple days, so I would assume that that's driving the rhododendron bloom. Always neat when you can find a little trailside spring. The water's just kind of seeping out of the ground, the rocks right here. Friends, this looks like a little camp spot here alongside the trail. It looks like someone left their skillet hanging on the tree. There's a little fire pit here and a mason jar as well. Just interesting things you come across. This would be an interesting spot to spend a night. It's damp here, which isn't ideal. You can tell this is kind of a real marshy area. There's some water over there and it's very, very swampy, which I'm sure is not doing us any favors as, as it relates to the humidity. But but hey, we're out in the woods, so those are just things you have to have to deal with. So this forest here is pretty interesting. These, we believe them to be red pine. They have two needles, so at least we know they're not a white pine. And then these, I believe are birch trees. So it's mostly red pine and birch. Hopefully you can see it above me. Well, friends, it, it looks like we've made it sort of to where we planned on starting the hike. Sarah's still finding red spotted newts everywhere we go. Oh no, that's a frog. Well, that's a big frog. No, that's a toad. I'm going to catch it. Okay. So we've walked, what, a mile and a half? Almost two. Almost two miles to get to where we wanted to start so it's probably going to be another mile or so till we get to the falls uh, we just hope we find them this is a big frog that's a toad this is a big toad
Friends, this setting here, it kind of came out of nowhere. We were just talking and walking and and here we are in this lush green ferns with the stream here and the peaceful sounds of the river. It takes me by surprise, quite, quite literally, because I, I really, it was like one minute you were, weren't here and now you're, now you're immersed in it. It's crazy. One of the coolest things about the Poconos is the blueberry patches and fields of them everywhere. If you're here in July, which I don't recommend because of the heat, but if you have to be here in July like us, find some blueberries along the trail. It's a nice snack, keeps the kids entertained. All right, friends, I think I can hear rushing water ahead. So that means we must be close. So there's several different routes and itineraries on all trails and various different sites about how to get here and it can be slightly confusing because I, I don't think that this part of the Pinchot Trail originally came here so if your map or something is out of whack then it could lead you astray but but I think we finally found it uh, we were going to try to take the road and which is just to our right maybe only like 20 yards or so then we decided the trail is probably a little bit easier because the road seemed like it was climbing up a hill but we're here now and I hear something that sounds like a waterfall so let's get you into it So friends, we have found the elusive Choke Creek Falls. We talked about in last week's video, the creeks around here are this scuzzy looking brown color and that's because of all the tannin from the hemlocks. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the water. That's just the way it looks. You can see it in the bottom layer of the falls just over there, how brown it is coming down. And of course there's rope swings up there. So I could see why this would be a spot that would attract locals to swim here. We actually thought about swimming. I don't know if we will or not, but there's nobody else here right now, which is awesome. As many people as we've seen parked at the parking lot, I expected this to be, be a hot spot, but I think with the road closure, it's keeping people away. But luckily all the people that do come here, at least there's no like paint and vandalism and stuff. And uh, just a friendly reminder not to be doing anything like that in these beautiful, beautiful places. And uh, on with the show. yesterday I think it was about places where Sasquatch might live maybe maybe he's here maybe not but I can't imagine that something doesn't live here this is a pretty interesting view of the falls unfortunately I can't really capture it because there's too much light out there and it's too dark in here but 
This would be a good shelter if you ever needed a shelter in a place like this. Definitely fitting for a Sasquatch. Walter and I were just talking about Sasquatch also. Uh, be a good place for one. found a, another camp spot and earlier I was saying uh, about that one spot that th that would be my camp spot. I think if I could have it all to myself that this would be my camp spot. All being right back there. But my guess is on a weekend you ain't getting this spot to yourself. So friends, we are headed back towards the truck. We are going to go a different way than the way that we came, slightly. But right now though, we're still on the Pinchot Trail, going back through the magical hemlock forest, which is, which is just ahead. We've been making our way along this yellow trail here. Uh, what did you say it was called? Butler Trail. Butler Trail. This is the Butler Trail. It would have created a loop with the Pincho Trail had we been able to park where we wanted and do what we wanted. But we're looking for a connector trail that's supposed to take us right back to the truck. And uh, according to all trails, I think it's just ahead. I haven't been filming much. There's not really a whole lot to see here. It's your typical Pocono landscape. Uh, you got some mountain laurel and you've got fields of blueberries and nothing too special. We're almost to where we were gonna go with the truck. Okay, that's good. It's hot and oh. humid and Sarah's picking blueberries and looking at red spotted newts and not walking. She's singing to herself now. Now she's singing. So that's fun. Okay, we're gonna keep so on. So never moving. fear, there is a sign telling us where to go. So at least we've got that going for us. Uh, we were worried we were gonna miss it, but luckily there's a sign and it's a pretty obvious trail going that way. And that should take us right back to the truck. Well, at least we're back in the shade here where we're at now. Out in that open landscape behind us, it, it was very cool. As in like, cool to like look at and see, but like the temperature, not cool. So in the shade though, it's really not that bad as long as you keep moving. But the open landscape, full of blueberries, it was, it was cool to walk on. Um, it's a lot like uh, where we just were down at Grayson Highlands, the changing of the landscapes. And, you, and you'll get that on these hikes. <sighs> this, is, this is another long day. Luckily we started earlier today. But uh, yeah, I mean, this was supposed to be, and if you were to be able to park where we wanted to park, it would have been a four mile loop. Uh, it has turned out to be something like a three mile out, three mile back situation to the falls. Totally worth it, don't get me wrong. Magical experience in the Hemlock Grove and awesome experience at the falls. But carrying him for as much as I've been carrying him the past three days, it's, it's exhausting. We're almost back to the truck, hopefully. All right, well, friends, we're back at the camper and um, just wanted to say we really enjoyed the hike with Walter to Choke Creek Falls. 
uh, that was pretty sweet. Yeah, it was a good hike. Longer than we expected, but still worth it. The falls was amazing. Definitely a worthwhile hike if you're in this area. And also be sure to go check out Walter's channel. He's coming over here to the state park and is going to be spending the night here. He has a site over in the other loop, so uh, we're going to be hanging out with him later tonight. And we're going to teach him what a mountain pie is. So that'll be in next week's episode here at Francis Slocum State Park. We'll give you all the details on this state park here. And yeah, we'll see you next week, Thursday, 5 o'clock. Be sure you don't miss it.